it's interesting to think about computer systems and, and how they work because I think a lot of people think about response time being just, hey, I go ask for that thing and I get this thing back and it's like a one-for-one -one transaction. And in that sense, you're, the analogy is that it, that's true for things like an ice cream van, okay? So if, I'm, if, I wanna, if I've got a, a queue of 10 kids and they all want an ice cream and it takes 60 seconds for the guy to pour the ice cream, take the money and send the kid off, I can get one kid, one kid a minute, right? Because that's how, that's how long it takes to serve the ice cream. And the only way that I can get more kids to get their ice cream in a shorter time is for the guy to pull the ice cream quicker. Now, eventually, and that's, that's gonna be, that's gonna, there's going to be a lower bound to that because there's only so fast you can, that ice cream is going to dispense. But I can actually, even in that simple sense, I can actually get more throughput without lowering the, the, the time taken to pull and pay for an ice cream. And the way you would do that is you install a second guy to take the money. So let's say it's 30 seconds to, to pull the ice cream, 30 seconds to, to take the money. Now, for one kid, that's still 60 seconds to get and pay for his ice cream. But after the first kid is there, I'm now serving two people at once. So actually, I've now doubled the throughput because each kid leaves the line every 30 seconds. So even though the response time is the same, for one kid, it's still 60 seconds to buy the ice cream of actually now getting two kids through every minute because I've divided that work up. And in terms of what you were talking about concurrency, I've now got a concurrency of two because there are two people being served at the ice cream van every, uh, every time I look at the thing. So now I've doubled the throughput, even though the response time has stayed the same. 